Hey, my name is Chad. Welcome to this video. We're going to talk about some new brass for my PRS rifle. So, obviously I've got my PRS rifle out here at the Freedom Farm, which is what I call my pretty cool little range that I made for myself. Um, so if you've been following along, you know uh, this coming Sunday we've got our final match for the local group's PRS uh, season. So, we were supposed to have it in June. People were out of town. They delayed it till July. So now we've got a pretty good size match, apparently like a 80 round match, and it's going to be on July 14th. So a very hot day, most likely, and uh, we're just going to see what happens. But I have been holding on to this Alpha Munitions Brass uh, for a couple months. I've been having you know pretty good luck with my Lapua stuff. And I finally decided, you know what, I got barrel clean. This is going to be as good a time as any to get a good start with another brand of brass and see if I can have, you know, similar or maybe even a little bit better results. So just take a quick look at the box here. They come in, you know, a nice box. They've got a foam packing at the top that keeps them uh, from jiggling around too much. So when you actually get your new pieces of brass, they're not all beat up and scratched and possibly dented like the lapuas are just tossed in a little blue box and closed and then they shake around as things are traveling so i really do appreciate this uh since i work in stuff where i'm shipping and receiving things uh good packaging goes a long way in my opinion uh, they use what they call ocd optimized case head technology uh, it's a bunch of scientific stuff supposedly they make the head of their cases considerably better and more advanced than other brands. Uh, there's reports of people getting dozens and dozens of firings on these before they start having cracks in their case necks. So I think with my annealing and the quality of this brass, these should last me for a very long time. Um, they did just come out with a new case lube and I saw that. I went ahead and ordered one of that, uh, a bottle of that and another box of these. So I'll end up having 200 of these cases uh, when you order from them, they do provide you with the amp anneal setting and some other data on the actual brass case dimension wise. And it's pretty cool that they provide that. So you don't have to sacrifice the case for your amp. They'll give you the code and that is a huge savings right there. So just looking at it, I mean, it's a piece of brass when it comes down to it. Apparently their stuff is, you know, here in the head, they're going to take and do a lot there, but you know, they are good looking pieces of brass. And, uh, you know, so far they've loaded up just like anything else. I mean, that's not too difficult. So having good luck with that. What I was thinking is that they might be like a smaller case capacity than my Lapua's. So I wanted to drop down and my current load on my Lapua is, I believe, uh, 39.2 grains. And I started with a 38.8 and a 39.1. Just loaded up five and I was going to shoot them on July 4th and then it rained in the evening and I wasn't able to get down here. But after work on Saturday, I ran down here and tried just two groups with those. So this was the 38.8 and this was the 39.1 group. So I'm pretty pleased with that. So numbers wise, with that group... I use one of those apps to, you know, measure and mark the shots. They're saying that's a 0.32 MOA group size. I mean, that's plenty good, but but it was only five shots. So we're going to see if I can repeat that. The main thing that interested me was that my speeds were down at 29.25 instead of 29.90s, which is what I was running with my Lapua. So, you know, mentally... I think that I need to be at that 2990 range, but I had really good numbers at this 2925 number. So everybody said consistency is the king, just run it. So numbers wise, the first group at the 38.8, um, I had an extreme spread of 19 and a standard deviation of 6.8. I had one that was like out of the, the group. So most of them were 2903 to 2911. I had one that was 2923. So that was giving me an average of 2910. I think something just went weird with that one. But overall, I mean, not, not a bad group. Definitely something I could work with. 
but a 6.8 standard deviation, I mean, nothing to complain about. What really excited me was that second group uh, that is like 0.3 something MOA. So that, uh, my extreme spread was 6.0. So my extreme spread was better than my standard deviation from the first group. And my standard deviation was 2.6. So numbers wise, this 2925 average speed is really, really good. But I don't know, mentally, I'm stuck on 2995. So what I've done is I took that kind of 15 average and mathed it up to what would should give me around 2990, 95 area. And I loaded up five rounds of that. We're going to give that a try. And then I'm going to try a 10 round group with the, um, the load that gave me really good numbers. See if that holds true. Um, whichever one looks better, that's probably what I'm going to load up into my Kestrel. That's going to figure out all the uh, drops and everything for me out at distance. So, you know, it doesn't really matter what speed I have as long as it's consistent. Because once I put it in my Kestrel, that's going to do all the work for me. Okay, so I had to look around here. Uh, on my way back from setting up the target, found a big tarantula walking down there. So filmed a short. Uh, I'll probably post that this evening. Ugh. But I don't see any around here, so I think we're good. Um, I'm going to start out with the five shots of the 40.2. I really just want to see the speeds and uh, what the group looks like. And then I've got uh, I've got 20 loaded up of the, uh, what is it, a 30, 39.1 load. And I'm going to shoot 10 here. And then I want to take the other 10 after loading the data in my Kestrel out to distance and see if I can hit at, you know, 5, 740, my targets that are set up. Uh, from my obstacle out at the road. So we'll see what happens. I did also between the first and second groups uh, yesterday. I took my glasses off because I just kept getting a little shadow when I'm down prone. My neck getting all wiggled around funky. So I'm going to do these no glasses. Um, I can just get a better sight picture that way. So here we go. Oh dang, those are boogieing way too fast. <laughs> okay, so I can already tell I went up way too much on my uh, powder estimate there. So it's not a uh, every 0.3 grains gives you 15 feet per second kind of situation. Uh, <laughs> whoops, that's what you get with only two uh, data points. Anyways, those jumped up quite a bit, so my average that was 3,068. Uh, so I jumped up like 140 or so over what I wanted to be. I had a 24 extreme spread and a standard deviation of 8.2, so you know that's nothing. That, that's too fast. Well, just looking at the numbers, that's not nearly as impressive as my Friday evening group. So now I'm a bit uh, perplexed. But I mean, on target, it's grouping plenty good. Um, I did adjust my scope, you know, up and uh, just a, a skosh to the left and uh, came up like 0 0.3, 0 0.2 and a half mils. And over to the left, like maybe a, a half of a mil. Try to quick blast with the uh, rifle cool, just blows air down through the uh, barrel. Let's it cool down a little bit quicker. It's just kind of annoying and loud, but does what it's supposed to. Okay, so we'll just admit that um, that was not really as great as my little group on Friday night was. So I'm assuming it's more than likely going to be small variations in the amount of powder. Um, I mean, I'm still getting an average speed of uh, 
what I was shooting for, 20, this is telling me 29, 24.5. So, um, I just had a much wider standard deviation. Like I had t a couple shots that were kind of way out of the, the norm. So like my first one was a 29.35 and then I had a 21, which is good. And then a 29.40, that was way out of the norm. And then a 20, 15, and then a 41. And then 17, 12, 21, 17. So I had a 40 and a 35, 40, 41, and 35. So those guys were, you know, out of the, the normal range, but you know, overall, it was still, I mean, it's still a pretty decent group down there. Not as good as that first one, but adding more shots, it's going to grow. That's the nature of it. Uh, so that said, I had a tw extreme spread of 29.1 and standard deviation of 10.2. Okay, we are out at the road, and we're going to give a few things some tries here. So first off, let me show you the target. So this one right here was the group that was moving a little bit too quick. And then this one here was the 10 shot group with my, what should be a pretty decent load. Um, I'm a little disappointed uh, just with the numbers. Uh, I was hoping to have a little bit better SDs and ESs, but I used that app that will measure, you know, you mark the, uh, mark the spots and it will give you a measurement. So it's telling me my group size is 0.56 inches and that's like 0.54 MOA. So, I mean, for PRS, it's plenty good. Uh, I'm not gonna worry too much about those three that were moving a little faster. So right now we're gonna do the most important thing is we're gonna try and get target hits out at range. I've got my target at about 500 yards and I've got one down through the trees. It's about 745-ish. Um, so I don't know, let's run it and just see what happens. Hey, one thing, if you like hanging out with me as I do these tests and get ready for this coming PRS match, I would really appreciate it if you would get subscribed right down below, hit that button, follow along. I really, really do appreciate it. After seeing what I've done here, if you have any suggestions for me or comments on things that I might need to do to improve, like I said, I really like to push myself to get as good as I can with my reloading and I'm still fairly new to it so I want to learn as much as I can I'm like group sourcing information putting what I'm doing out there I'm hoping that if anybody's got some tips for me share them with me down in the comments I'd really like to learn more as I get into this I will say at this point it's too late for me to really do much changing um I've got to work Tuesday through Saturday and the match is Sunday morning. So I'm kind of out of time for doing more tests. This is telling me I need to come up like 2.4 for my first one. And then uh, 4.7 on my second one. So let's try 2.4. Looks like I've got all kinds of critters, gnats and everything coming out now that we're at uh, sundown. So... I really don't know what's going to happen, but we're going to give it a try. And, uh, <laughs> oh man, I have no idea. But we're going to go for it, because that's what we came out here to do. I'm sure you heard that. I mean, I got it. 745 yards. Says I need to come up 4.7. I'll give it one tenth just to trust my Kestrel and see if I'm doing this right. Well, missed that one. Huh. Well, tricky part about this target is it's like a torso. So it's tall, but it's very narrow. I think at this distance, it's a... Uh, about three quarters of a minute wide and about a minute and a half tall. So I've got height to work with, but I don't have much width. I'm pretty sure I'm missing off to the side. Okay, so I was uh, overcorrecting for the wind. As usual, wind's always the thing that gets me. 
So first shot, I kind of held center. And I think the wind may have picked up just a little bit. And then I thought it laid down. So I held off to the left edge of it. And I should have been on the right edge of it. So that time I held the same that I held on the left edge onto the right edge and got a hit there. Just wind information. I've still got to get better at that. Okay. Nope. Man. Ah. Uh, terrible. Got him. Okay. Well, not my best. Uh <laughs> especially out of distance. So uh, I think I'm going to end here. I'm going to do a little more work uh, moving around after I uh, turn the camera off and make sure I'm still getting down into position good and quickly. Uh, I was kind of thinking too much about the camera being on right now. So I need to turn that, shut that off and work on a few things before I lose all the daylight. But it is 9.07 p.m. on Monday night and I'm cutting it close for getting ready for this match. Make sure and tune in next week. See how this match ends up going for me. I am hoping to finish in the top three. That's my like stretch goal. I really want to finish in the top five. Um, I don't know how many people are going to be there, but uh, my goal is, you know, for sure top five. If I can push it and get into the top three, I'll be very happy. So the rest of this week, I've got to get my ammo loaded up and then I need to, uh, I've got a new bag coming in, that savior bag that I had initially wanted. Finally became available again on Tuesday. So I ordered that. I think I should have that in uh, on Tuesday or Wednesday this week. So I'm going to try to get my rifle loaded up in that. I got the new MDT timer ordered. So I'm going to try that in the match or uh, I might just wait and play with it after the match. But uh, I don't know. I've got a few new things that I'll be showing off to you guys in the next coming weeks. Make sure and stay tuned for that. They're going to be some really cool stuff. That new rifle bag looks awesome. We'll see if it actually holds everything the way that I want it to. But in theory, it should. So that's going to do it for today. A little bit of match prep, getting ready for the upcoming final PRS match of our 23-24 season. So I'm really looking forward to getting out there. Not so much looking forward to the absolute sweltering heat that we're going to be dealing with. But that's how it goes in Oklahoma hot and wind pretty much a guarantee thank you very much for hanging out with me for a few minutes i really do appreciate it that's going to do it for this video i hope you have a great rest of your day and a wonderful weekend and we'll see you on the next one bye